The skyrocketing rates of depression among teenagers. For teen girls, the suicide rate has doubled in less than a decade. Joining us tonight for this week's Your Health segment is Dr. Kimberly Cass, Chair of Pediatrics at the University of Maryland's Upper Chesapeake Health. Doctor, thank you for being with us. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Do those numbers surprise you at all? And, and what do you think is going on? So they don't surprise me because I've been in the emergency department and we've been noticing this rise. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with the growing pressures on our children of today and the fact that they are embarrassed to talk about, you know, if they're feeling sad, if they're feeling depressed. I was wondering if it's a coincidence. We're, we're looking at, at numbers over the last 10 years, and recently in the news was the 10-year anniversary of the iPhone, the first <laughs> smartphone, and we're at a, past the tipping point where most adolescents, I think, have one. Absolutely. Um, I think that in the younger generation, if you ask them if a smartphone or social media is more good than bad, they'll say good. If you ask our generation, they will say bad. Mixed picture at best. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think that there's a lot of differences between the generational ideal of, you know, how society should be. And somewhere in the middle is going to be where the answer is. And, I mean, the whole world moves faster than than it used to, but the smartphone and, and the kid who spends most of their time staring at it, it's hard for, for a parent to really know what's, they can't supervise that too well. Right. Well, there are a few things that we can actually do to improve that. Number one is when your child goes to bed for the evening, that device should not be in their bedroom with them. That is not where they should charge it. It needs to be in a public place in your home where you can then get online and see what's happening. Look at their Facebook account or Twitter or whatever the next social media site is. Hey, we're, um, we're dating ourselves talking about <laughs> I know, it. absolutely. New, newfangled, uh, right. Uh, but I think that we need to keep track of that just as we would, you know, when I was young and I was on the phone with my girlfriends, my parents would pick up the phone periodically and find out what we were talking about. We need to do the same things to keep our kids safe until they're emotionally old enough to be able to deal with what's happening online. And I would guess you like the idea that at dinner time everybody puts the phone down or maybe in a, in a different room. Absolutely. I think family dinner is, you know, is one time to sit down and catch up with what happened with your day. And to open the discussion of, you know, how's everything at school? Are you noticing any pressures? You know, what's been happening? So what's happening on the phone that um, can mess with a young person's psyche. I mean, there's there's so many great things about it. The ability to stay in touch with people, the ability to learn anything almost immediately, mm -hmm. but also the ability to reach out and cyber bully somebody. Absolutely. Um, one of the problems is, is we all make mistakes. Um, and I'm very glad that when I was going through college, there wasn't social media because I don't know what would be out there. Um, you right. know, a child makes a mistake now, and that mistake is kept with them forever, and it haunts them. And then kids will utilize that, and they'll make fun of them. So when I was young, I was in school, someone wanted to pick on me, they picked on me, and then when I got home, I was in the safety of my home, my mom and dad, my family, and I could forget about all of that. Now, kids can't forget about that. It's with them 24-7. Let me uh, remind our viewers, if you have a question for the doctor about depression, you can give us the call. The number is up on the screen. You can also tweet your questions. The Twitter address is at MPT News. Do boys and girls handle this differently? The, the numbers I mentioned at the top, the, the change over the last decade was more severe for girls than for boys. Yes. So um, depression definitely affects um, slightly larger numbers of girls than boys. Um, some of that is, is it a confirmation bias because girls are more likely to talk about it and boys will hold their information close to them. Um, but as far as successful suicide rates, more girls attempt, more males are successful. Interesting. Um, so, I mean, it certainly is something that we're seeing a rise in both genders, in all races, um, and in all sects of society. What, what can the, the medical uh, community do about this? You, you work in a setting where you see people who are in crisis. Ahead of that, what, what can the, the average pediatrician be working on? So the average pediatrician, as well as the schools and counselors and parents, 
we can listen to our kids and we can ask the uncomfortable questions. There's nothing um, embarrassing about being depressed. There shouldn't be a stigma associated with it. So when we ask our kids, you know, how are you feeling? Are you feeling sad? Or if we notice, why haven't you talked to your friends lately? Why have you not wanted to go to sports? Why have you done these things? And continue to ask the questions and then also ask the direct questions. You know, if you know your child has been feeling sad or as a pediatrician, you know, we do a suicide screening tool saying, have you ever thought about killing yourself? Do you think the world would be a better place if you were dead? We need to ask these questions so that there's an opening for kids to tell us about it. If they feel they're inconveniencing us, then they're going to just be quiet about it and we're not going to know. Let's grab a phone call. Anne Arundel County, this is Jean. Jean, thank you for the call. Go ahead. I had read some months ago about this article about the FDA approving this experimentation of some extremely fine ground plastic being added to certain foods. I don't know what the foods were, but the possibility of this stuff lingering in the tissues of our young people, could that be? Jean, interesting question. Thank you very much for the phone call. More, more broadly, um, additives in foods, is there anything else to, to look at in terms of uh, increased depression rates or just what they're eating? I mean, I think in general, we all know that, you know, a well-balanced diet with fruits and vegetables and plenty of water a day and rest and taking care of our bodies um, is definitely going to improve health. So I think there's probably some small portion of that, um, but I don't think it's the major contributing factor of today. Um, you think that there's too much stigma associated with depression. Shouldn't be any. Correct. Um, one of the things that as parents, and I probably have done this to my children too, is, you know, if they're sad about something and it seems trivial to us, we say, oh, get over it, or just wait till you grow up. It's so much worse. It's a horrible thing to say to our children. Um, when, in honest, if we could just pause a moment and listen, we could really learn a lot from our kids about what's going on in their life. And then if you're noticing that they're sad that they're crying more, that they're unable to sleep at night, that they're extraordinarily stressed out about something happening at school, ask the questions, you know, are you being bullied? What's happening? How are your friendships? Um, and always, you know, you, there's a lot of resources online. There's, you know, a suicide hotline. There's um, your pediatrician. There's the local emergency department if you feel your child is in crisis, but get help. Let's pretend we're, we're teenagers and, and we're in high school or something or, or middle school and there's some, some sort of uh, bullying or there's some sort of social issue. It's something that's got you tied in knots. How, how do you handle it? What, what advice would you give your teenage self if, if that teenage self had a smartphone? The first is, is to talk to your parents and then talk to your guidance counselor. Um, your guidance counselors have programs and they want to know earlier on so that they can get something while it's small before it becomes very big. They can address it a lot more easily at that point. Um, and the other thing is if it's really to the point where it's bothering you, turn off your phone. Talk to your family. They'll lead you in the right direction. Tougher time to be a parent today, would you say? I would say yes. Um, <laughs> From experience? Uh, yeah. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. I think the as your children grow, the I guess the stress in your relationship with your child changes. Um, you know, you are centrally the most important thing in their lives, and as they grow, you become less important is what it feels in your heart, but in reality, you're more important. But you need to, you know, you don't need to necessarily check their bathwater anymore, but you need to check their whatever social media site. You need to be present for your kids, and you need to listen to them. Have you heard from, from par parents you've talked with, anybody who's got a great approach to doing it? Because I wonder if there, there isn't just a divide between parents who are completely hands-off and p parents who are maybe looking over the shoulder a little too much, if that's possible. It is absolutely possible. I mean, your child has to be given the tools that they need to grow up and succeed in life, and they can't do that if you don't allow them some freedom. Um, but they need supervised freedom. It's, you know, trust but verify. 
doesn't mean that you can't allow your child to grow up, but you have to guide them in the right direction. Um, and as far as hands-off, I don't think any parent wants to be hands-off. I think that parents work one, sometimes two jobs. Parents are both, you know, working weird hours late at night trying to provide for their families. So I don't think it's bad parenting. I think it's just understanding that maybe you need to take an extra hour in the evening. You need to put down, you know, not, don't tune into the news for 10 minutes so that you can listen to your child when they're talking to you. Let's uh, wrap this up with a little advice for, for summarize the advice for parents and, and, and also for, for teens. Two things. One, the context of just parenting in this age of, of amplified pressure, faster everything. And, and second, uh, where there might be a concern about uh, depression or, or potential suicide. Um, I think the first is, is keep your lines of communication open with your children. And children, keep your lines of communication open with your parents. They're a little smarter than you even know. Um, and then, if you are concerned, get help. Do not ignore or minimize your child's concerns. Um, if you are concerned, there is a um, suicide hotline. It's 1-800-273-TALK. Um, and they're available 24-7. They'll put you into contact with people in your community that can help you. Dr. Kim Cass is the Chair of Pediatrics at the University of Maryland's Upper Chesapeake Health. Doctor, thanks for the time. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.